Today, I want to come to you guys with my years of knowledge of Mythic Plus and kind of talk to you about why people suck at Mythic Plus. There are a lot of people that are hard stuck at a specific key level that are seeing failure to improve. And while it might improve over time, uh, next season you might be a Fodum DPS or something like that. Next season you might be the Fodum Healer or Fodum Tank Roll. There are a lot of ways and a lot of things that you can do to actually improve your game right now that people don't really understand. And we're going to take my knowledge over years and kind of convert this into how to improve at Mythic Plus in a way that you otherwise might not know. All right, so the first reason, and this might be a bit controversial to people watching, but pugging is actually incredibly harmful towards like players improvement. Uh, inconsistent play patterns from people that are in your group doesn't do you any favors in the slightest. Not playing with consistent people also doesn't help. And on top of that, uh, compositions changing over time kind of throws you off your game because the way that a couple of people might do things with a specific comp, uh, it varies drastically than other people, right? And so inconsistent play patterns and, and not having the uh, consistency of a, a solid group is harmful to your gameplay. And that also comes with using LFG because then that also creates very specific things that you will do whenever you like are in a mythic plus dungeon a lot of that comes down to like you know you trust nobody whenever you have to whenever you see an incorporeal spawn for like a coordinated group a lot of the times you'd rather have a shadow priest get it but whenever you're pugging you know you don't have really an option that you should be getting every incorporeal for afflicted kind of the same thing you know that you should be dispelling every afflicted and with you know also pugging being bad no voice comms is also like a pretty big deterrent of this where you know not being in voice with people is is particularly harmful to your gameplay and that's going to hold you back in the long run of, of just pugging now i'm not saying that this is like easy to get away from because the lfg tool for a lot of people is their source of utilizing mythic plus right it's the way that they get into keys right they don't necessarily have a group of people that they play with but i will say that even if you have two or three people that you play with consistently and then you fill in those other slots with you know people either people from lfg or people that you don't really know that well your play is going to improve significantly because you're going to you know know the routes that people are going to be pulling you're going to be a lot more comfortable with the people that you're playing with you're going to have specific synergy built up with some people and that's going to help you improve your game a lot and once you're able to kind of say to hell with LFG, to hell with pugging, you're going to be able to get multiple key levels out of your own gameplay experience with that alone, where you might be doing, you know, 22s right now. If you start playing with consistent people very quickly, you're probably going to be able to do 25s because you're no longer sitting around waiting for keys. You're no longer uh, sitting in LFG getting declined all the time. And instead, you're actually kind of getting out there doing more volumes of dungeons. You're setting up uh, groups to play together and you're going to just be more aware and be more familiar with what's happening in your keys. And I really don't want this to come off as like, oh, just find friends because that's not exactly the point, but it's more that pugging is actively harmful toward your gameplay. And, and, you know, taking that step to try to push yourself to, you know, get into more consistent groups is going to help you in the long run. It's going to increase your score by a significant amount. Right. And on top of that as well, it's going to be hard for you to do the highest level keys possible if you're not in voice comms, if you're only pugging, and if you're not, and if you're only reliant on yourself, because you're going to see your damage improve, you're going to see your awareness improve, and you're just going to see your overall experience improve whenever you're playing with people in voice that you know that you play with on a regular basis. Reason two that I see that a lot of people kind of suck. Utility and defensive usage is really bad. Either you don't press utility or you press it at the wrong time. Um, same with defensives, either you don't press them or you press them at the wrong time. For a lot of bosses this season in particular as well, defensive usage is at an all-time high where there are very specific moments of boss fights where defensives are important and there are specific moments of boss fights where defensives aren't important. And I see people fairly regularly on a fight like y'all knew, which is the last boss of Everbloom, press their defensives at the wrong time. When in reality, the only time that your defensive really matters is for the overlap of the stomp whenever the ad is out. But for a lot of people, they just kind of rip their defensives at a random time. And so that doesn't do anything. For utility, I see kind of the opposite where you don't press utility at all, right? Rogue doesn't press blind. Demon Hunter doesn't press Chaos Nova. The Vengeance Demon Hunter that's OP because of all the utility doesn't utilize silent sigils in the correct way or they utilize them uh, at the wrong time, right? And, and 
utilizing utility and defensives and watching how other people do that actually is going to help your game play and experience a lot. And a lot of this for non-healers is probably the most important thing because for defensively, healers kind of know when damage is going out. So they're, they're going to be more adept at knowing what the damage patterns look like. But for DPS, you need to have a better awareness of your defensive usage and your utility usage. For interrupts, this and this comes with time but awareness of like what you need to interrupt what you're able to interrupt those are like pretty important because say you're playing a mage you know that if you successfully interrupt a target it's a 20 second lockout there are a lot of mobs this season that are 20 second lockouts that you can like solo as a mage that historically you know have been on a little bit longer of a lockout there's also things that are on a 24 second kick that you can solo as a mage but then there are things that are, that are on a 16 second lockout that you know that you can't necessarily kick every single time so you either have to rotate kicks on it or you could like you know kick shifting down your your interrupt and then kick it again or honestly you could just pawn it off to a melee and have them interrupt it every single time because that makes more sense and so having awareness of what's the meta thing for you to interrupt why you should be kicking what you're kicking as well that's also going to help you improve but that's something that comes with time i don't expect people to like kind of pick this up immediately especially with the interrupt situation but i think that awareness about pressing your utility and pressing your defensives at the right times is, is very very important a big reason also that people suck in mythic plus is the lack of self-improvement um you see this a lot where people will blame stuff on others i wrote down in my notes oh my god we lost this key because of that demon hunter when in reality a lot of things compound on top of one another for groups to not time a key and while you know that demon hunter dashing into the glaive on dentalian axe might have actually depleted the key right so the, it was the end result that finished the key off at the end of the day, there still was probably a lot of other reasons that the key got depleted beyond that final thing that actually depleted it. Whether it be some people's damage was a bit lower than it necessarily needed to be. The tank's route was a bit too conservative and it could have been a lot more aggressive in, in some areas. Uh, somebody died on a different boss or a different trash pull that actually lost you a decent amount of time. And while you know the demon hunter at the end of the day could have depleted the key, being able to take a look at the run as a collective and understanding why the entire run got depleted is also important. But self-reflection, I think, is the most important thing to learn from this. And, and while you can blame others for the depletes, instead you could also take a step back and be like, okay, so even though we depleted this key, or even better, even though we timed this key, how can I continue to improve? And and so like even after you time a key, you're like, oh, okay, I didn't have to die here. That actually lost us a significant amount of time. Or, like, I could do more throughput healing on this boss fight. I could do more damage on this boss fight if I played it a little bit better. Or, or uh, I you could even go through and VOD review. And I think that that's something that a lot of people don't do because it takes a lot of effort. But if you're able to VOD review and potentially even show the VOD to your friends who play a similar spec or a similar class and get their opinions on how things work as well, that's going to improve your gameplay experience by a significant amount because you're... First off, I think actively putting in a lot of effort to try to get better at Mythic Plus, and I think that that's going to be a big deal for improving. But not only that, you're trying to learn how to get better. And by fielding uh, questions from other top-end players or fielding questions from your friends, you're, that's also going to help your gameplay experience a lot. And you're going to have that level of self-improvement that you otherwise wouldn't have if instead you were either blaming others or just kind of content whenever you timed a key and be like, oh yeah, this is the expected outcome. And you don't necessarily think that you can get better. Next up uh, is the next reason that people kind of suck is fundamental knowledge. And I would say that the knowledge barrier has been lowered a little bit. It's definitely lesser than it has been in the past. But damage patterns to avoid one shots are a pretty prominent one this season. We kind of talked about when we were talking about defensives. Having knowledge of what you're supposed to do in every single situation with your defensives is really important. Think about Yasma Solrend. Once you start pushing to higher levels for Yasma Solrend, there's going to be things that your group kind of are, are going to naturally press. So, say a monk presses Chigi for every other Solrend, you know that then you're kind of responsible for the odds or the even soul runs for coverage if the monk is pressing Chigi on the odds. And and just knowing, you know, what other classes in your group do and knowing how to kind of react with that on a defensive level is is really important, especially avoiding one shots. Stops versus interrupts. We talked about this a little bit earlier with kicking mobs and knowing cooldown timers on interrupts and like what you should be kicking necessarily in a pack. But does a mob require stop or does a mob require an interrupt is is a big one. It, historically 
where stops weren't classified the exact same way as interrupts. Now Blizzard has done a good job of consolidating it down to where stops and interrupts are virtually the same thing. But that's not the case in every single situation. And knowing when a stop versus an interrupt is important is is going to uh, be a fundamental improvement to your game. Line of sighting mobs, like or what are we? What should we be line of sighting? When should we be line of sighting? Uh, is this something that you should be realistically looking to do? There are some situations where high end groups say you spawn a soul charmer in Waycrest Manor, whenever you have a lot of guards and captains. So guards and captains are required kicks. The soul charmer you can technically line the soul bolts and the soul bolt volley every so often. Now you're going to lose a lot of damage doing this, and so that might not be the best thing. But knowing that you can line of sight that. Especially if you're in grave peril is important. Also learning, you know, other meta things like what am I able to melt? I think that that's like a pretty big one where, you know, Blighted Galacron is a pretty important meld this season. Eridicron is a pretty important meld this season. But having that knowledge is, is kind of a big thing. There's also other meta strats like what are, what are high-end groups doing to make these keys a lot easier. And, and that can come from watching other people's streams, that can come from VOD reviewing, that can come from, you know, just playtesting on your own. But I think that there's a lot of knowledge out there for a lot of players, but they have to go and get it, right? They can they can ask other high-end players how they do a specific thing. They can watch a lot of runs. I think a lot people watch Mythic Plus as kind of entertainment, but if you watch it in the sense of, oh, what are they doing? How could I improve my own gameplay experience? That's going to be a big one for you to be able to uh, gain knowledge that's required to improve your game and to elevate your game, no matter really where you are on the spectrum. All right, and so the last reason that I have that you kind of suck at Mythic Plus is flex talents. CC, Dispel, you know, single target versus AoE talents. Those are kind of things that a lot of people just kind of copy a build on Wowhead, and they don't necessarily think too much about beyond just, oh, what is the talent build that generically is good here? And they don't really try to learn why people play what they do or where other talents are good in specific situations and this comes down to experimenting i think a little bit and a really good fundamental understanding of the class that you're playing that season and while a lot of people re-roll and it kind of comes with time at the same point so a lot of people play their main for an extended period of time and they still don't necessarily know what a lot of different talents do or situations that the talents are good and so i think that you know experimenting with things like different ccs and specific moments is important I think about priest whenever I say things like that, where you can shackle or you can dominate mind in incorporeal, but dominate mind is is significantly superior. And a lot of generic shadow builds aren't going to tell you uh, to dominate mind in incorporeal. They might have dominate mind talented, but they don't always have dominate mind talented. I think you end up taking it a lot, but that's not really relevant. But until you utilize that CC on an incorporeal you don't really know that i think dk is actually probably a better example with control undead where once you control undead the incorporeal you, you actually gain a damage reduction from the mob i think you gain it up to 10 percent, and so you don't ever take control undead except for incorporeal week so it doesn't make sense to you know try out those things for uh, flex talents like dispels for a lot of classes you have to opt into a dispel and i think this is obviously super prominent for druid where talenting into specific dispels for specific dungeons is a huge deal but more generically builds aren't going to have you talenting into dispel mage wants to talent into d curse for waycrest manor but most generic mage builds aren't going to tell you to do that i think also a good fundamental understanding of single target versus aoe talents is important now this goes by a class by class basis but people really, really, really undervalue single target damage in Mythic Plus dungeons. And whenever you start to simulate in Sims what makes the for the best build in Mythic Plus dungeons, fairly consistently, it is something that has a really good balance of single target and AoE. It, infrequently is it something that is like full AoE. And so I think that having a good understanding of why you're playing specific builds that you're playing, uh, what is it good for, and are there ways to make Tyrannical a bit easier or Fortified a bit easier with a couple of talent swaps, and like what are those key talents that you need to change, and playing around that, playing those around those flex talents are huge. There's also good utility flex points that I have written down, Mortal Dance for Demon Hunter for Sanguine, that kind of thing is actually really important, where there's this curve where Demon Hunter doesn't necessarily need Deflecting Dance to kind of live anything. And so on Sanguine Weeks, they should play Mortal Dance. But at like a high level, obviously, they're going to be playing uh, Deflecting Dance because they want the the shield to survive. But most people don't need the shield to survive on a Havoc Demon Hunter. Instead, you should probably be playing Mortal Dance for DH for Sanguine. And so understanding that there's a lot of different flex points utility-wise that can improve your gameplay that's like a big deal. And those are all the kind of reasons that I have written down 
of why people suck at Mythic Plus and kind of how to improve at Mythic Plus and no longer be hard stuck in whatever uh, IO score you have. Uh, overall, a lot of self-reflection and watching other people play and trying to play Mythic Plus as much as possible is going to help you get a lot better. But there are a lot of other things as well that whenever you sit down at the end of the day, you kind of have to get real with yourself. Oh, these are the reasons that we're not performing as well as we potentially could in Mythic Plus. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.